Hello, welcome back to Blake's Den. So for those who don't know, this is my 1989 Austin Mini Designer Special Edition. Completely standard. Uh, and I'm keeping it completely standard and I'm doing quite a lot of work on this. I don't want to use the word restoration because that would suggest there's a degree of professionalism going on. I'm not a professional, I'm just someone who's just giving it a go. Um, and yeah, I'm just learning as I go, really. So in the last video, you saw how I failed to fit the rear valance and decided that I needed to uh, clean the floor a bit more and get that all painted up before the valance goes on. So that is what I'm getting on with today. Before I make a start, um, can I suggest that you click the subscribe button below and click the notification button as well? I was looking at my YouTube stats the other day and 91% of my traffic comes from people who aren't subscribed to the channel. So it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. You'll get notified when all the new videos go live. And the more subscribers I get, the more features YouTube unlocks, which means the better content I can deliver to you. I'm actually going to start removing all the under seal by starting on the wheel arch passenger side rear wheel arch um which seems an odd place to start considering my plan was to do the floor but i haven't done anything to this wheel arch i did put the wire brush on previously just to try and knock some of it back and i was happy that it was solid but i haven't done any more than that to it so anyway i'm going to start there and to do that I've got a variety of tools that I'm going to use. So first I'm going to use the heat gun and a scraper to get the under seal off. Get that back as far as I can. And then I'm going to start and use the um, various discs on the angle grinder. So I've got a couple of wire brushes. I've got this which is a strip and clean disc. That one's quite worn. It's like a fiberglass stuff. And then the flap disc as well. And I've also got safety goggles ear defenders and this really good mask I got really comfy to wear and um, just stops all the dirt from going everywhere uh, and stops you from breathing it in really. Um, it is a messy job this and it's not a fun job but it's just one of those jobs I'm just going to have to get on and do. So just showing you the technique I'm using here, I've got the heat going on the under seal and then I should be able to then get in with the scraper and start prising it off. There we are. It normally comes off in sort of one big sort of peel. There we are, a bit like that. So, very slow process, but one of the things has to be done. So, I think that's about all I can do with the heat gun and the stripper for now rest I'm going to hit with the wire wheel um, but it's really interesting you can see like in this corner here that grey is like the original primer for the car and you can see I've actually scraped through the bare metal here so which is solid but then you've got rust here where it's failed where the um, sort of here, the under seal has failed and then similarly around around there as well so um, it's fairly solid the only really flaky bit I've seen is that corner but I think I can live with that so Right, get the wire brush on, which is even messier. Oh yeah, that's all the bits which came off. So, dust pan and brush, one of the best, or two of the best tools you can get if you're doing a project like this. Uh, the next bit is going to be incredibly dusty, so I'm going to get the vacuum out as well. Uh, I'm not going to fill them it halfway through because there will literally be dust everywhere. So that is after attacking it with a wire wheel. Looking pretty good. Um, I need to do that bit up there with a wire wheel on my drill, just for better access. So a couple of problems I found is this flaky bit down here. That is basically just a, it just extends down a little bit, so there's nothing behind it. So I'm just going to square that off and not worry about it. But I have found a hole. Hopefully you can see it. There you go. There, a couple of holes, um, and that corresponds to basically top of a wheel arch. You can just see the light shining through there. 
So um, yeah, I need to patch that up. Also, I was using my uh, Parkside shop vac, it's a wet and dry vacuum. If you watch my videos, you know I love the um, the bargains in the middle of Lidl, and uh, that one was from there. Again, great tool to have in the garage. If Lidl are watching this and want me to do a tool review, just let me know. So that is after a pass with the uh, strip and clean brush on the grinder or the strip and clean disc. Uh, and a couple of passes in certain places with it, the flap disc as well. So that is down to bare metal now. You can see the reflection of my orange coat in there. So that's looking really good. Um, I've still got the rust up there where I need to tackle. Um, so the, the, the flap disc, it does a great job of if you've got surface rust, it really eats into it. But that's the difference between the two discs. The flap disc will give you sparks because it's actually taking the surface off. The strip and clean disc, clues in the name, it just strips and cleans the surface. So it's, it's abrasive, but not abrasive enough to eat through metal, um, which is sort of what you want when you're stripping. So what I'm going to do it is nearly lunchtime, according to my clock over there. You can see it on the wall. Um, so I am going to coat all this with Hydrate 80 Rust Killer and I'll come back after lunch and fathom out how to uh, do a patch repair. Quick Blake Sten top tip. Um, when you use the Hydrate 80, you can't use this straight from the bottle, or you're not supposed to. You're supposed to decant it and then whatever you've got left you don't put back in the bottle uh, because if it's got any iron in it, any ferrous material, any rust, It'll just make the whole bottle go off. So I actually decanted into a Hammerite rust remover bottle, which is an old tub I had. And um, you only need a tiny bit of this, it goes such a long way. So um, that is what I've got left over and I've actually caked everything in the wheel arch, plus a few things more. So um, yeah, use it sparingly and use it in a separate tub. Right, when I come back after lunch, that'll all be black and gone off. Back from lunch and all of that Hydrate 8 has gone off, which is good. So I want to tackle these two holes up here now. Just get my light over to show you. So what I've ended up doing was I put the screwdriver through them just to find out where the good metal was or more accurately where the bad metal was. And um, yeah, they're fine. Uh, it's just two little circular patches needed. A bit in the middle solid, a bit either side solid. So I'm just going to make a couple of little patches, put them in from behind and then weld them in. When I make a panel out of Zintec or steel, I always keep all the offcuts because uh, inevitably they come in useful. And sure enough, there's a little offcut that I've cut and shaped. And then that is going to form the repair patch, which goes over there, but it's so tight I can't even show you. To, to see where it goes, I was actually peering through the uh, fuel filler cap. So, yeah, about there. Now, it's obviously only two holes, uh, but I've just done a longer patch just to make it easier to weld. So I'm going to weld that in. I'll probably not get any action shots of it because uh, it's just so awkward to see what's going on. That patch is welded in now. You, you can barely see it and you've got the fuel tank which goes there anyway. And then got a bit of a shadow here. There we are, two holes filled in with weld. Um, for welding, I use my Artec MIG 180. I've had this a few years now. Absolutely fantastic, love it. Just really good. Did my research before I bought it and just really happy with it. And I've got an account with BOC and I use Argo Shield for my shielding gas. So I've decided to get this painted now. Uh, I'll do this and I'll do the floor separately and keep this as a short video. Uh, the YouTube analytics suggest that short videos are better. Uh, and certainly from what I can tell, you guys like the shorter videos. But comment below if you want to see longer videos or shorter videos. I tend to keep them around 10-15 minutes, but something shorter. Right, I'm going to paint this with the uh, Bonder Rust Primer. 
And that's all painted up now and protected with the Bonda Rust Primer. Um, I know I've got a little frilly bit down there. I'm actually going to sort that out when I do the floor in the next video. Um, I say that's the lip there. That level's actually the floor level. But I think there's a little hole behind it in the companion box. So I'll sort that out then. So, yeah. Good, uh, good day's work. Right, well, as I said, I'm going to keep this video short. So I'm going to wrap it up there. So um, if you're one of my subscribers, Happy New Year to you. If you're not a subscriber, then please subscribe. Please like the video. Please comment on the video. It all helps. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.